here with live cam. Things in the shot look pretty good. Uh, some fog uh, in our viewing area, but not in this shot. Pretty cool at 59 degrees. And we're going to be talking about how things are warming up once again with Mike. Live from KSAT 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday, March 6th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a good week so far. Uh, I had joked a little bit with Mike yesterday about 90 being offensive. So we, we, <laughs> we, we hit the 90s yeah, yesterday. I think it was too offensive yesterday, no. the 91, because we had the drier air. <laughs> that in helps. Place. So today, we're not going to be up to 91. Anywhere, say, four, five, six degrees cooler, but I don't know if you can say cooler, but uh, we'll have more humidity. Uh, maybe a little more off. offensive, I don't know. So anyway, uh, the humidity, which is still low right now, is starting to work its way back into the picture now. As you can see, just kind of compared to yesterday, all we could see was barely at the top of the Tower of the Americas. Everything else was barely socked in with some of that fog that we had. So we've got the dry air in place, but fog down to the south, down to the southeast, as that moisture tries to work its way back in here. We're at 57 degrees right now. We are still on the, the warm side of things above normal by a handful of degrees all around the area. And dew point temperatures, which when you just go by the, the scale over here, 60 is always that threshold number where you get above that, you start to feel the humidity. So we're at 45. Step outside, kind of nice. Go down to the southeast, and as you can see how the green does darken up down here, and that means more humidity coming in here. And that's why there is that fog down to the southeast, and that will continue to push on in throughout the course of the day. Oak is on the moderate side. Everything else is low. The update account is going to come out a little bit later on this morning. Of course, we are definitely getting into oak season. You look at all the oak leaves that are on the ground. Uh, temperatures are going to be pretty steady from this point on. And then going up into the 60s, 70s, rising fairly quickly by noon up to 80. And then we'll top off at 84. So again, six, seven degrees below yesterday's high, but that humidity starts to increase. We'll still keep a few more clouds hanging around here. We do have some rain chances around tomorrow, maybe a couple of, <clears throat> excuse me, stronger storms, and then a front's going to clear us out for the weekend. The weekend looks great. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ, anything big? All right, Mike, starting to see a few things pop up across the area. Figured that with more people on the roads during your six o'clock hour. We're taking a look here at 35 on the east side here, 35 north and New Braunfels. This is a camera. We have a stalled vehicle being reported there, 35 northbound at Walters Road. So this is going to be affecting all of our traffic headed up to the Frost Bank Center, Frost Bank Center Drive area right there. Let's take a look at our maps, see exactly what we're looking at. We just saw traffic is moving along in that that area right now we have at least that one right-handed shoulder lane that's uh, kind of closed right now as uh, TxDOT officials the hero trucks are out there trying to help a uh, driver out there because of a stall breakdown here at northbound 35 at Walters Road the rest of the city everything else looking okay for the most part but again starting to see some more things pop up uh, across our area including 1604 Culebra we also have a stalled vehicle being reported 1604 westbound at Culebra looking at the maps right now not causing any major delays but again that one just popped up there a lot of People obviously use Calabria Shanefield Road to get around that 1604 area. So we'll continue to keep an eye out on everything going on across the city and give you more updates as they become available. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. This morning, fire investigators trying to figure out how a fire started in a house that was supposed to be vacant. They say they also found a woman inside that house and had to rescue her. It's in the 700 block of North Colorado, not far from West Main. Katrina Weber at the scene and tells us why firefighters faced a bit of an unusual situation there. This is definitely a different situation for firefighters. While they are used to patients refusing treatment, it's not every day that they have one runaway, but they say that's just what happened when they pulled a woman from this burning home earlier this morning. She appeared to have smoke inhalation, but firefighters say she took off running. Now, the house where this happened is behind these fire engines. Uh, it is, according to firefighters, a vacant house. No one was supposed to be in there. They say when they got here before 4.30 this morning, they did find that woman inside. They brought her out through the back of the house. And again, they say she appeared to have smoke inhalation. They had paramedics standing by ready to treat her, but she took off running. The firefighters believe she was perhaps staying in this house when she should not have been, and maybe that's why she ran off but uh, they did not get a chance to treat her. They were able to knock down that fire rather quickly before it caused damage to any of the other homes. The damage to this vacant house does appear to be pretty extensive. Reporting just west of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
Let's get to some primary election results when it comes to U.S. Senate race. Republican Ted Cruz just clinched his party's nomination. Question is, which Democrat is going to face him? This is a nine-person race on the Democratic side for U.S. Senate, but it came down to two, and it's hardly been close. Here is a look at statewide results first. State Senator Roland Gutierrez up against Colin Allred, a U.S. rep from North Texas. Gutierrez, who represents the Uvalde area, has been a huge proponent of gun control in wake of the Robb Elementary school shooting. Allred, not a name well known in South Texas, but a name that raked in the campaign dollars. And here's the results in Bear County. Colin Allred has claimed victory and will be facing Ted Cruz in November for the race. The U.S. Senate, despite a large deficit all night long last night, Gutierrez took a positive tone at his watch party. However, he eventually gave his concession speech standing in front of families of Robb Elementary victims. But I promise you here right now that my fight against Ted Cruz isn't over and my fight against Donald Trump isn't over and my fight against these Republicans isn't over because, folks, they don't give one damn red cent about you. And I can't tell you how much it means to me to be your nominee, to be the next senator from the great state of Texas. And while I will be the Democratic nominee, I want every Texan to know, whether you're a Democrat, an Independent, or Republican, that I want you to be involved in this campaign. And I want to serve you in the United States Senate. Let's go down to the Republican race for U.S. Congress in District 23. Well, the seat currently belongs to Tony Gonzalez. Four people challenged him for that nomination. Let's go ahead and look at the numbers here. Tony Gonzalez with 45% of the vote in the lead. Our Danielle Ibarra has been covering the race from the congressman's office. We did not get a chance to speak with Tony Gonzalez on election night. We reached out to his campaign nine times in the evening, but never heard back. We wanted to talk to Gonzalez about what he thinks about the possibility of heading into a runoff, which it appears by the results he is going to head into a runoff. Gonzalez has held this seat since being elected in 2020. Last year, he was censured by his own party for votes that split with the Republican Party. That includes supporting a bill defending same-sex marriage protections and a bipartisan gun bill. To give you just an idea of how large this district is, it stretches from El Paso all the way here to San Antonio's west side. It covers a large stretch of the Texas border. The candidate Gonzalez will likely face in the runoff is Brandon Herrera. He's a social media personality and a Second Amendment activist. Now, over in the Democratic primary, that vote is split 50-50 between Lee Bossinger and Santos Limon. On the northwest side, Daniela Ibarra, KSAT 12 News. Well, in a statement, Tony Gonzalez said, quote, I am truly grateful for all those who continue to show trust in me. Tonight, we won all 29 counties in the 23rd District of Texas. Next, we'll do it again, only with a larger margin. State Representative Steve Allison was upset in his bid for re-election by challenger Mark LaHood in Texas House District 121. The support of Governor Greg Abbott pushed LaHood to an impressive victory in the Republican primary. Dylan Collier spoke to both candidates about how this race played out. Attack ads don't always work in politics, but it appears they have done the trick this time. LaHood, who said he supports the governor's plan on school vouchers, is now on the doorstep of being able to vote on the measure when it is sure to come up at the Texas legislature next year. Allison blamed his loss in the primary on Abbott and even described the governor inserting himself into the race as an inexcusable move. Allison had been targeted by attack ads for months. LaHood told us he felt the momentum shift in his favor in the later stages of this race and says it was time for a change in this heavily Republican district that covers Alamo Heights, Olmos Park, Terrell Hills, and parts of North Bear County. People are tired of politicians saying one thing and not doing it. And I tell people, if we fire them more often, they would keep the word. With all the attack ads, uh, you know, that, that were just unmerciful and uncalled for. You know, that's what's so disappointing, what we've resorted to, and, and uh, we've hit a new low. Laurel Jordan Swift won the Democratic primary and now awaits LaHood in the November election. LaHood will enter that race as the heavy favorite. Reporting on the far north side, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. Now let's take a look at the race for Republican state representative in District 44. We can see that John Kimple has the seat. 
He faced three challengers there. We can see David Freemark with, and also Greg Switzer and Alan Schoolcraft. In Uvalde, we were following a handful of races. The incumbents for those races, Sheriff Ruben Nolasco, Constable Precinct 1 Johnny Field, and Constable Precinct 6 Emmanuel Zamora were all named in that Department of Justice report because they all responded to the Robb Elementary School shooting the day 21 people were killed. Now the sheriff's race is going into a runoff between Nolasco and challenger Otto Arnhem. Zamora will be keeping his Constable Precinct 6 Seat overwhelmingly. However, the surprise of Super Tuesday is the Constable Precinct 1 spot. Field will be unseated by challenger Max Dorflinger, who also responded to the Rob shooting, but for the Uvalde Police Department. Now, the former mayor of Uvalde, Don McLaughlin, who is running for state representative District 80, is getting huge support in Uvalde County. He'll easily be going to the November election against a Democratic challenger. What you see is what you get with me. I'm not afraid to speak out and call it like I see it. I'm going to fight hard for this district, whether whether you're Republican, Democrat, Independent, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. I'm going to fight for the people of the district of uh, District 80 and, you know, try to get things done in our district. We asked McLaughlin if he would still support raising the age to purchase semi-automatic rifles from 18 to 21 in Texas. Like he said, when he was mayor of Uvalde, he said he will have to assess where things like mental health and violent video games are before he makes a decision on that. Right now, we're at 611, 58 degrees. A lot more coming up in your election coverage right here on GMSA. Up next, Republican presidential hopeful Nikki Haley dropping out of the race after Donald Trump won Republican votes in a dozen states. We're going to have the latest in just a moment. And outside with live cam this morning, as I said, in our last hour, 58, 59 degrees or so as we took a look at the airport, dress accordingly as traffic is building on Loop 410. Welcome back to GMSA 615. This morning, the picture of the presidential race has become quite a bit clearer. President Biden is gliding to Democratic nomination with his predecessor, Donald Trump, clinching a third Republican nomination and a rematch against the president. As ABC's Ike Ajachi reports, there were cautionary signs playing out for both President Biden and Donald Trump, while Nikki Haley has decided to suspend her campaign after Super Tuesday. Breaking this morning, Nikki Haley dropping out of the 2024 presidential race after winning only one state, Vermont, on Super Tuesday. Her decision makes Donald Trump the presumptive Republican presidential nominee. Sources tell ABC News Haley is not expected to endorse a candidate today. Now, the picture is clear. President Biden and former President Donald Trump will presumably face each other in November's election. Biden and Trump dominating Super Tuesday races across the country, securing delegates with notable victories in Texas and California. For Republicans, Trump winning by large margins in all states except for Vermont, whereas GOP challenger Nikki Haley walked away with her first state of the primary season. They uh, call it Super Tuesday for a reason. This is a big one. Haley winning a portion of the vote, between 20 to 30 percent in some states. Trump, not mentioning Haley by name, says it's time for the Republican Party to be unified, while turning his focus to the general election. We want to have unity, and we're going to have unity, and it's going to happen very quickly. For Democrats, President Biden winning nearly all the delegates so far. Biden releasing a statement on the results, saying the American people have a clear choice, writing to millions of voters across the country made their voices heard, showing that they are ready to fight back against Donald Trump's extreme plan to take us backwards. Still, both candidates are facing cautionary signs. Biden continues to see voter pushback for his handling of Israel's war with Hamas. On Tuesday in Minnesota, an unusually high number number of Democrats voting uncommitted in protest. As for Trump, his issues stem from suburban and women voters turned off by his message and rhetoric. Looking ahead, President Biden will have a chance to reinforce his campaign message at Thursday's State of the Union address, where for the first time, the entire message will be live streamed from the POTUS Instagram account. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. Just about 18 minutes past the hour. And in some of these trans guide shots, it looks like things are moving, but let's check back with RJ Marcus. Yeah, guys, quick update here on the east side. It looks like uh, we had that emergency vehicle off to the side of the road there on the shoulder, but uh, hopefully we get that cleared out. I-35 at New Braunfels because we've seen a couple of things in this area right now. So there's a stall being reported, 35 northbound at Walters, and then a little bit in this direction here, 35 at North New Braunfels as well. But based on that trans guide shot, it looks like we are starting to clear things out there on the east side. Now, traffic has been moving through that area, so no 
major delays to let you know about right now. We're still following this uh, stalled vehicle being reported here, 1604 westbound at Calabria Road. So it's going to be affecting all of our traffic coming in from Shanefield down to 151. So obviously a lot of people that use Calabria Road. Okay, it looks like we still have some emergency activity out there. We'll get uh, a little bit more information on that one here in just a bit. Taking a look at 151 there. 281 traffic moving pretty good across the rest of our area. All right. Sun's trying to come up yeah. in that shot yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of a glow. We've got a lot of clear skies here in town. Some fog down to the southeast as that humidity is trying to work its way back on in here because, of course, it dropped yesterday. But it will get more humid as the day goes on. Maybe a light jacket this morning. You know, it's kind of 50s-ish. Yeah, kind of yeah, you won't need to buy later on this afternoon. It's not going to be 91 again, but we are going to be up to 84. And again, clouds will kind of increase, fill in a little bit more, and also the humidity is going to increase a little bit as well. We do get another break in the humidity, though, coming in this weekend. Kind of jumping ahead of myself, but more on that <laughs> in just a moment. All right, 33 days until the big solar eclipse on April the 8th and the path of totality, which... The sort of eastern edge is right there in northwest Bear County, just about, say, at the, the rim, La Quintera area, and then obviously out into the hill country. That's about 108 miles wide, that entire swath that's uh, cutting across from pretty much Texas up in toward the, the Great Lakes area. And uh, you yeah, have beautiful viewing out there, and it's going to be crowded in the hill country on that day. And we will continue to obviously keep you updated and counting down to those days. All right, isn't it nice when the kids were still little enough to stick them in the blue bonnets and take those great pictures? Love that shot. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right. As far as right now, as you can see, we do have a fairly good view out there from our camera down at Brook City Base. Not a whole lot of humidity in place, but it will, like I said, continue to increase throughout the course of the day. Here's what's going on with the uh, the upper level steering winds. This low is going to start to develop here, and that's going to help to throw more moisture in from the Pacific Ocean. That's why the clouds are going to continue to increase today. One of the reasons, and of course, we get the humidity down here at the surface. And then as that moves in closer, it's going to throw some energy in the area. And that's going to give us a chance for some showers tomorrow and then also overnight into early Friday. Then as we get into the late afternoon evening hours, that's going to throw a move past us, push a front through here. We get on the, the cool side then, and that's actually going to pull down temperatures that will be about five degrees on average below normal, even for high temperatures coming up this weekend. Great looking weekend in store, maybe a couple of extra clouds here and there. Sunday looks fantastic. Monday as well. We'll start to get a few little glitches, little bumps in the uh, upper level steering winds coming in here by the middle portion of the week. So small chance for a couple of showers by then. And then by late in the week, another big low is going to be developing there. And that's going to not only heat us up ahead of it, but also looks like another chance for some rain as we go into the latter part of next week. So as far as today, we'll see more clouds. We're not going to be completely socked in with clouds, even though that graph kind of shows it, that graphic shows it there. Then tomorrow, we start to get into a few more rain chances, a few showers here and there uh, throughout the course of the day, not raining constantly by any stretch. And then as we go into tomorrow night, we'll start to see more of those showers and thunderstorms. The majority of those are going to be further up to the north, and that's where the uh, threat for anything severe is. Now, it's basically west Western, northwestern half of our area, but a little bit better shot further on up to the up to the north, which is where I think most of the uh, showers and in potentially heavier storms are going to be 84 today. Knock off 10 tomorrow down to 74. Still light, slightly above normal rain overnight into early Friday. We'll start to clear out front moves through good looking weekend on the coolish side. Mid 40s to start off mid 60s in the afternoon with a fair amount of sunshine. A lot more after this. This thing? A blue monster. It's what's going on inside of me. It's my moderate to severe ulcerative colitis. It wasn't always this calm. UC went everywhere I did. Wondering when it would pop up next was stressful, doing a number on my insides. The monster turns red and rambunctious. But then I found out about Velsipity, a new once daily pill, not a steroid or biologic, for adults with moderate to severe UC. Velsipity can help calm the chaos of UC. It quickly treats flares, providing a chance for lasting steroid-free remission. At one year. 
Don't take Velsipity if you've had a heart attack, chest pain, stroke or mini stroke, heart failure in the last six months, irregular or abnormal heartbeat. Velsipity may cause serious side effects, including infections that can be fatal, slow heart rate, liver problems, increased blood pressure, macular edema, certain types of skin cancer, swelling and narrowing of the brain's blood vessels, or shortness of breath. Tell your doctor if you are pregnant or plan to be. If conventional therapy like 5-ASAs or steroids aren't working for you, ask your gastroenterologist about Velsipity. Velsipity, help calm the chaos of UC. Velsipity.com. In this morning's GMA First Look, spring break crackdown. With millions set to descend on Florida for spring break, officials across the state saying not so fast. Florida is a very welcoming state. Uh, what we don't welcome is criminal activity. What we don't welcome is mayhem. After scenes of chaos last year that led to nearly 600 arrests and two deaths in Miami Beach alone, the Sunshine State is clamping down. What makes you confident that this spring break will be different than previous years? We have got a plan that implements components that we've never ever done before. Hey, we need to talk. This isn't working anymore. In a new ad, Miami Beach even breaking up with spring break. And it's not us, it's you. We just want different things. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll be live from Florida with the very latest. With your GMA First Look, I'm Victor Okendo, ABC News, Miami Beach. And a good morning to you outside right now with live cam. Take a look at this sunrise this morning and I'm imagining that this is kind of what it looked like on this day 188 years ago today when the Battle of the Alamo, the siege, came to an end. More on that coming up in this half hour. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, March 6th. Thanks for joining us. We hope you had a good week so far, but looking beautiful so far in the morning. It is a gorgeous morning out there. Mike Coaster H joins us now with a look at our Wednesday forecast. Pretty comfortable when you step outside. Of course, we had the dry air yesterday and that helped us to get to 91. Now the humidity will start to increase as the day rolls on and some of these clouds are going to continue to kind of move on in here. But yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous picture as of right now. Might want to grab a light little jacket just because we're at 57 and and this number is still well below 60 dew point temperature, the sort of the measure moisture in the atmosphere. However, it is up from where it was yesterday and it will continue to creep upward as the day goes on. A lot more humidity down to the south and southeast, so we do have some fog showing up there. Nothing like what we had around here yesterday, however. Uh, temperatures all mid upper 50s, still on the above normal side. And of course, these dew points are just looking at these numbers are very comfortable, but notice how we're at 53 at Stinson, 55 Seguin, and that continues to go up further down to the southeast. And again, that moisture just continues to push up in through the course of the day. Oak is on the moderate side. We're really starting to get into the oak season. All those leaves are on the ground now, and all that yellow dust and pollen is not far behind that. Increasing clouds throughout the day, as well as humidity. Not as high as yesterday, not 91, but we're still going to be up into the mid 80s later on today. Tomorrow, we're going to have a couple of showers here and there throughout the course of the day, not any sort of a rain out. Then we'll have a few uh, shower storms late tomorrow night, overnight into the early, early morning hours of Friday, perhaps a leftover uh, kind of damp commute on Friday. Then a front moves through here. That's going to set us up for a great weekend. Actually a bit on the coolish side, mid 60s in the afternoon. Just a great looking weekend and going into next week. Overall, it's going to be nice. We will start to heat up somewhat toward the end of the week and we do have a couple of rain chances, especially toward uh, Thursday, Friday of next week. All those details and a closer look at the weekend forecast in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority been pretty quiet. So yeah, far this been morning. pretty quiet. Mike starting to see some fog definitely roll through the area here. Take a look at this shot here. I 10 here at uh, State Highway 130 out in the east side. As Mike has been mentioning, we're seeing a lot of fog in certain parts of our area. So this is something we'll continue to monitor. We do see some traffic getting through here. But again, you're just seeing brake lights there, low visibility, and also some of those cars coming in our direction right here. Speaking of the east side, we do have a car fire being reported. I-10 westbound at uh, Loop 1604. This is going to be the ramp that goes to 1604 west from I-10. And traffic right now backed up all the way to 1518 on the far east side. This is being reported by the San Antonio Fire Department. So I believe it is on one of the ramps there, something we will continue
continue to monitor. Unfortunately, don't have any cameras in that area, but again, we'll keep an eye on it. Stall being still being reported here far west side now, 1604 westbound at Calebra Road, not causing any major delays at the moment right now, but again, this is all of our traffic coming in from 151 and the Shanefield Road area. The rest of the city, everything else is looking pretty good. South side, north side, everything's looking pretty good. We have a stalled vehicle being reported northbound 35 at Schwab Road if for all of our people that are headed up to New Braunfels and in the Comal County area. So we'll continue to follow the very latest here, give you more updates on and show you more of these Transguide fog shots here in just a bit. Mark and Stephanie, back to you guys. RJ, thank you very much. We want to take you live right now to the Alamo where a rather quiet ceremony is currently taking place. It's a solemn day in San Antonio and Texas history. Today's date marks the end of the 13 day siege at the Alamo, March 6th, 1836. On this morning, Mexican the Mexican army attacked two times and were repelled, but a third attack was successful. Colonel William B. Travis and most of the Alamo defenders fell this date 188 years ago. So you are looking live at dawn at the Alamo, and this is all presented in partnership with the San Antonio Living History Association. You can see hundreds of people are out there. Again, this solemn and inspiring ceremony marks the 188th anniversary of the pivotal 1836 battle. Most of you are waking up wondering more about the primaries. We've got you covered. Bear County Commissioner Rebecca Clay Flores is headed to a runoff after she failed to get more than 50% of the vote last night. Well, she faced off against five Democrats in yesterday's primaries, and Patty Santos tells us the incumbent isn't happy that the race is heading to a runoff. Yeah, it appears she wasn't too happy with the results from tonight's uh, elections. She left uh, her watch party tonight without talking to KSAT. She knew we were here waiting for her final thoughts on this runoff. It was a long night for the Rebecca Clay Flores' camp. It was such a close race that she waited until the very last numbers were in before deciding that this was going to be a runoff. She was watching those numbers, hoping to break the 50% mark. About two miles away, her opponent, Amanda Gonzalez, celebrated this runoff as a victory. She says it's clear that people are not happy with the status quo, and that shows after tonight's election. Gonzalez is rallying up support from those other candidates who ran against Clay Flores, and she has the support of the Bear County Sheriff Deputies Association. For Gonzalez, the focus for her campaign is on public safety. Clay Flores says she's focused on expanding mental health services for her community. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is making sure um, that public safety is at the forefront. I believe that all residents should feel safe inside and outside of their homes. Um, and I think in this race, most importantly, we have seen that public safety is not a Priority. We serve the rural communities as well, so that's something that's really lacking more mental health forensic beds, not just for adults, but for our teenagers as well. The runoff will happen at the end of May. Whoever wins that race will head to the November elections against Republican Lida Prado. For GMSA, I'm Patty Santos. The race for GOP Bear County Commissioner Precinct 3 has been a tight one. Republican Grant Moody won this seat in a special election back in 2022. So let's go to our latest numbers. Grant Moody winning 53 to 47 percent. Garrett Berger has more on this race. Grant Moody's watch party ended on election night without a clear victory, though he told his gathered supporters that he was encouraged by the early results. Moody's a former active duty Marine F-18 pilot and has held leadership roles at USAA and Valero Energy. He's currently the lone Republican on the five member Bear County Commissioner's Court. Though he pointed to a new property tax exemption and more law enforcement officers in the county budget as things he was still able to accomplish. Having had 15 months in office now, I asked him what he could do with 48 months, a full four year term. His answer? a lot more. You know, we focused on public safety, which I still think is, is foundational and pri priority number one. Uh, but also there's work to be done around spending, around making sure we get um, you know, our, our property taxes down. You know, the state's made some progress. We were able to secure a $70 million property tax cut for the hospital district, but there's more work that needs to be done on that front as well. Moody's opponent in the Republican primary, business owner Chris Schuhart, has tried to position himself to the right of Moody, accusing the incumbent of voting with the court's Democrats most of the time instead of making an ideological stand. Moody has said most county business isn't partisan. And while Schuhart's argument appeared to help him keep close to Moody, it was not close enough to close the gap. 
Moody will now run again against Susan Corbell, the Democratic candidate who ran unopposed. Corbell and Moody faced off in the special election, which he won in November 2022. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. In Uvalde, we were following a handful of races, including some of those law enforcement officers who were named in the scathing U.S. Department of Justice report. Lee Wallman reports from Uvalde as those election numbers were unveiled at the Uvalde newspaper. The big races that we were following, Uvalde County Sheriff and Constables for Precincts 1 and 6. The incumbents for those races, Ruben Olasco, Johnny Field and Emmanuel Zamora, all three named in the Department of Justice report because they all responded to Robb Elementary the day that 21 people were killed inside of that elementary school. The sheriff's race going into a runoff between Olasco and challenger Otto Arnon. Zamora will be keeping his constable precinct to six seat overwhelmingly, but the surprise of Super Tuesday is the constable precinct one spot. Field will be unseated by challenger Max Dorflinger, who also responded to the Rob shooting, but for the Uvalde Police Department. The former mayor of Uvalde, Don McLaughlin, who is running for state representative District 80, getting huge support here in Uvalde County. He'll easily be going to the November election against a Democratic challenger. We spoke to McLaughlin about what this means to him. What you see is what you get with me. I'm not afraid to speak out and call it like I see it. I'm going to fight hard for this district, whether whether you're Republican, Democrat, Independent, I don't care. It doesn't matter to me. I'm going to fight for the people of the district of uh, District 80 and, you know, try to get things done in our district. We asked McLaughlin if he would still support raising the age to purchase a semi-automatic rifle from 18 to 21. Like he said when he was mayor here in Uvalde, he says he'll have to assess where things like mental health and violent video games are before he makes a decision on that vote. We know there is still some disappointment for the families of those survivors and victims of the Robb Elementary School shooting because of the sheriff's race and one of those constable races. But we know that their calls for accountability won't end here. In Uvalde for GMSA, I'm Lee Waldman. Thank you to all our election crews hard at work last night. 640, 58 degrees this morning. Let's look out there with live cam. Yeah, a little cooler this morning than it was yesterday and the day before, but looking pretty there with the sunrise and as we go to break we're going to show you some results from the other races that we're following. Just about 644, we have new details on the search for answers in a murder case from seven years ago. Some of these details are graphic. We just wanted to warn you. Police and the Texas Rangers searched an area in the 5600 block of Timber Steep. That's on San Antonio's far northwest side near Tezel Road. Back in 2017, a woman who lived on Timber Steep named Sally Hines disappeared. Her head was later found in Louisiana, but her body was not. So far, all we've learned from the Texas Department of Public Safety is that the Texas Rangers were at a home to process evidence. No other information on the case was made available. Now to an active silver alert from the Port Aransas area. The Ingleside Police Department is searching for 82 year old Willie Hill. Police say he is six foot tall with gray hair, blue eyes and wearing a blue shirt with a stripe on the shoulder and khaki pants. He also has a cognitive impairment. Ingleside police say that Hill vanished yesterday afternoon at about 2.45 p.m. in Ingleside near Corpus Christi Bay. He was also driving a silver 2008 Dodge Ram 1500 with a Texas license plate CWZ8589. So if you have any information, you are asked to call this number that is should be on your screen right now. It is 361-776-2500. Again, 361-776-2500. 776-2531. There it is right there. All right, thanks. Uh, let's go straight to RJ for a traffic update on our Wednesday. Yeah, guys, you're probably going to see those trans guide signs also uh, talking about that silver alert out there. But uh, we did find this stalled vehicle being reported here. 1604, it's actually going to be the eastbound access road there at Calabria. So you do see that traffic is moving through the main area here through Calabria Road. But 1604 eastbound access road, we do have that stalled vehicle there. Not causing any major delays, but something for our people in that area to uh, just kind of keep an eye out on. We do have this car fire 
fire being reported I-10 westbound. This is going to be right before the Loop 1604 westbound exit. Traffic has been backed up past 1518. So uh, unfortunately, we don't have a trans guy camera there that can see anything from that area, but uh, it's causing a pretty good delay out there for our drivers coming into San Antonio from the far east side. Also have a car fire. This one south of downtown Probant off of I-10. You can see that it's not causing too many delays right now as we get you back on the rotating shot here. 1604 Babcock, traffic moving pretty good there. 410 at Ever, same situation as well. And again, no uh, major, major things, but except for that incident out there on the far east side, just uh, keeping an eye out on that one, guys. So far this spring, have you guys in person seen any of the wildflowers around the area? I'm not. Mm -hmm. I haven't no. really either. I haven't either. I've seen a few pop up here and there off yeah. of like the access roads, right. but nothing. Yeah. Well, yeah, thank like goodness for pictures. I yeah. know. I say, thank you for the pictures. This is why we always ask for the KSAC Connect pictures because look at this one. Absolutely gorgeous. I love that with those pinks and yellows in there and the green grass and the blue sky. You, you couldn't make paint a picture prettier than that. Thank you very much for that one. Yeah, keep those pictures coming in if you, you know, obviously safely take pictures of some of the wildflowers. All right, kind of a hazy look to the sky right now. We've got a few clouds out there. Visibility is good all around the metropolitan area, at least the reporting areas. But uh, RJ has been showing a couple of those trans guide shots, 10 especially going east of town where there is some fairly thick fog. You head down toward Beeville, Victoria. We've got some fog there, Catula, Laredo. So the humidity is trying to come back in here. Look at that. Austin's now down to just a half mile visibility. So like I said, humidity is working its way back on in and it will continue to increase throughout the course of the day. Most everybody was up in the 90s yesterday. Of course, we did have that dry air, which is being replaced by the humidity today. Different story. Still, we're going to be on average 15 degrees above normal up to 84 here in town. The normal high temperature is 71. So on average, like I said, about 15 above normal all around the metropolitan area. We are in the upper 50s right now. We've got some of that hazy looking sunshine out there. We'll see some of those mid high clouds sort of kind of filling in throughout the day. 80 at noon and as the humidity increases, you'll definitely feel that 84 degrees. So it may be even though we're seven degrees lower than yesterday's high, may not kind of feel warmer today just because of that extra humidity. Clouds, like I said, will continue to increase. This shows us sort of socking. We're not going to be completely clouded over today, but just a lot of those mid-high clouds out there. And tomorrow we start to see even a couple of showers. Um, this computer model has sort of two waves moving on through here. Some scattered showers throughout the course of the day, and it's not going to be raining constantly nor everywhere. Then we uh, get into tomorrow night, and that's when we'll start to see the next wave of showers and storms move on through. But notice how the majority Majority of those we'll have a few around here in town and this is even going to be early on Friday morning so it's looking like it's going to be you know, somewhat of a, a damp commute on Friday and then we'll clear out nicely after that so 84 today 74 tomorrow showers couple of storms some of those storms especially up in northern portions of the hill country may be on the strong potentially severe side that'll be late tomorrow night early early Friday again the front moves through that's going to make for a great looking weekend. A couple of extra clouds here and there, but look at that mid 60s in the afternoon, mid 40s starting off. Same thing to start off on uh, Monday and then it's going to get uh, warmer going into next week. We're going to wrap things up after this. Stick around. Just heard taps, a solemn day at the Alamo ceremony taking place live right now down at Alamo Plaza, where you see some of the reenactors now loading their muskets for a ceremonial volley. There are about a uh, hundred people out there in the crowd for this dawn at the Alamo presentation. And again, this is presented in partnership with the San Antonio Living History Association. All right, so is this day 188 years ago that the Alamo fell? after multiple attacks from the Mexican army on this day.
And again, you're hearing the bagpipes play out here at the dawn at the Alamo presentation. There was a wreath laying earlier, and of course, this is a, a solemn ceremony uh, commemorating what happened at the 1836 battle. March 6, 1836. Well, coming up today on GMSA at 9, the San Antonio Book Festival returns for its 12th year next month, and the lineup will be released this morning. We are hearing from organizers with the festival about what this event means for San Antonio, and we're getting a sneak peek at some of the authors attending. Time now is 5 till 7. Let's go ahead and check back with RJ. Looks like there might be problems there at 1604. Yeah, last check of traffic here. Three things to let you know about before you hit the roads. Loop 1604 at Calebra. This is going to be the eastbound access road traffic moving through this area, but we do have this stalled vehicle out there. It's been out there for a few minutes now. Car fire being reported. I-10 westbound Loop 1604. This is going to be right before the exit there for 1604. Now traffic you see is backed up all the way past uh, 1518. So if you're coming in right now from that the far east side, keep that one in mind. I-10-1604 and south of downtown, we have this car fire being reported at Provent off of I-10 right there at West Mitchell Street, causing some delays for our drivers headed towards I-37. Mike? Sun's just about to peak over the horizon right now and kind of hazy sunshine out there. 57 degrees. We're going to make it up to 84 later on today and the humidity is also going to be increasing and then chance of showers and some storms late tomorrow. Clearing out. Good looking weekend. Looking forward to that weekend. Thank you, Mike. All right, so uh, thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you back here for GMSA at 9. Have a good day. Good Morning America is next.